Hello, my name is Paul Miners, and welcome to another one of my Asana training videos. In this video today, I'm asking the question, what is Asana's role in your company? And I wanna encourage you to start thinking about where this tool fits into your company so there's no confusion in your team and just so that you get the most out of Asana as well. Now, if you have any questions at the end of this video, please feel free to leave me a comment below. And if you do want to inquire about my consulting services and learn how I can help you to improve your setup of Asana and adoption within your team, then have a look in the link below this video uh, to learn more about my consulting services and options. So what is Asana's role in your company? I think this is a really important question to answer either now as you are just getting started or maybe you've been using Asana for a little while, you've tested the water a little bit you know you like this tool um, but maybe you haven't really come up with any kind of plan or rules around how Asana should be used. It is important to, ans uh, to ask yourself this question come up with a bit of a plan around how Asana should be used and communicate this to your team. So as a result, of, or as a outcome of the end of this video, I would encourage you to maybe do a mind map or plan on paper uh, some answers to some of the questions that I'm going to be asking. Um, the important thing is to then communicate your expectations to the team, even if it's just you using Asana on your own or using it with a couple of people, I think it is important to ask, how does Asana fit in with the big picture in terms of how you as an individual or you and a team, how do you all just do your work? What I find most people do with Asana is they start setting it up, they set up a couple of test projects uh, and, and kind of share it with their team, but they don't really roll it out with any kind of formal plan around what it should be used for, kind of do this, but don't do that. And so there can be some confusion as some people use it for one thing, other people use it differently, and it can actually hurt the overall adoption of Asana. So a good place to start is by brainstorming. What are you going to use Asana for? So think about all of the departments, or processes or types of work that you need to manage in your business. Are you gonna use it for maybe planning content or just admin and random tasks? Are you planning client work? Is it for running meetings? What are the different areas of work, departments, projects that you and your team need to manage? Now, what I find some people do is they start off by using Asana just for one type of work. Maybe if you're an agency, it might just start off bit, uh, for managing kind of a list of clients and where each client is at. Uh, or maybe you're just using it, using it for administrative tasks. Um, people often kind of pick one project or one type of process and uh, kind of test Asana with that. And then what I, what I find a lot of people do is as your confidence with Asana grows, you will eventually use it for more and more things until basically you end up like a lot of people where Asana is just the main hub for all your work. And for me now personally, if there's something I need to do it basically lives inside of Asana. There's nothing that I need to do that's not in there. I basically, all of my work is, is managed in this system. So if you're just getting started, just brainstorm. What are the different things you possibly could use it for? Keep in mind that Asana is a very task and project based system. It's very actionable. So list out like I could use it for uh, running meetings. Um, I plan my content calendar, accounting work, client work. Maybe you plan events or you run training courses, whatever it might be, but just try and get everything out of your head and think about what are the potential things you could use Asana for. Something else to consider is how are you going to use it to communicate? Uh, a, a big part of Asana is that you can comment on tasks and inside projects to communicate back and forward. And so how is Asana going to fit with tools like Slack or Microsoft Teams or even just email? Uh, a lot of people use it for their internal communication as it relates to tasks and projects. And so tools like Slack or Teams really just become used for more real-time uh, throwaway communication and email maybe for more external communication. But again, something you just need to think about rather than making assumptions about these kind of things, set some rules between you and the people, the other people using Asana so everyone knows how and when to use different systems. Similarly, what about document storage? You can attach files and documents to Asana, but that doesn't necessarily mean it should replace a cloud storage solution like Google Drive or Dropbox. Uh, I'm of the opinion that documents should still live on Google Drive or, or a cloud storage product, uh, and that really in Asana, they should be linked into Asana. Uh, you can attach from Google Drive into Asana, but really long-term storage of files should still happen into those systems. So that's something that you need to think about, and again, 
communicate with your team. How will Asana fit alongside other tools? You know, Asana can uh, often blur the line between tools like Airtable or maybe Google Sheets or Google Documents. Maybe you have a CRM. So what is the use case and purpose of each of them? Why would you use Asana instead of something like Airtable if you use both of them? Make sure that you've thought about what the answer to that would be. And again, you've shared that with your team. Another good example of that is notes. Uh, I do put a lot of notes into Asana, but my rule is that I put, uh, I put notes into Asana if they are related to a task or a project that I'm working on. So to give you an example, I'm working with a client and I have a call coming up with that client. Sometimes they will email me and say, hey Paul, here are some questions or some uh, topics that I'd like to discuss on our call. So I'll often copy those into the task that I have for that meeting in Asana because the notes are related to that task. But other random notes, maybe brainstorms that I'm doing, um, that might happen in some other third party tool if it's uh, because it's not task or project related. So if you do use something like Evernote or uh, Microsoft Notes or whatever, whatever the alternatives are or Bear or Ulysses, when would you use one of those tools and when are you going to use something like Asana? Some people use Asana for things like documenting processes and uh, standard operating procedures as well. It basically becomes like the manual for how to do certain things in their business. And so maybe that's um, a role that Asana is going to play in your team and your company. I think that's a great, uh, a great thing to use Asana for, in fact, is uh, maybe you run events. And uh, every single event, there's sort of a set timeline you need to follow. There's a process that you need to go through. There's procedures and getting things signed off that you need to go through. Those kind of processes you can actually build into templates in Asana. That way you can share that template with the team. Somebody new comes on board. They have all the kind of documentation they need ready and built into Asana. So maybe that's something you're going to be using Asana for. The key takeaway I want to communicate through this video is that I just want to get you thinking about what role Asana will be playing. Think about the answers to some of these questions. If you're brand new to Asana, what project or area of your work are you going to start by managing with Asana? And what are the other things you could use it for potentially in the future as well? Fundamentally, like I said, it is a task and project management system. The value of Asana comes through the fact that it creates transparency around who is doing what and by when. That's really what this tool is designed for. So keep that in mind. I would encourage you to not um, take Asana too far in terms of using it for things that it's not really designed to do. I've said this before, but I'm a fan of using the right tool for the right job. And so just keep that in mind. If it's task or project based, Based, I think there's something, uh, you know, Asana can have an impact there and can be used for task and project work. So let me know what you think uh, of. So let me know if you have any questions, thoughts, feedback at the end of this video. If you have any interesting use cases around how you use Asana or you're not sure if you should use it in certain ways, please leave me a comment below and I'd be happy to have a discussion with you there. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.